Interesting facts about famous people. The fastest Western gunslingers. Today's video is an interesting subject. Not sure why I haven't looked at this before. It's a pretty obvious one. Who was the fastest gun in Western movies? Staying away from the TV shows for this video. That's another video for another day. As this is a list of 10, I'm sure I will get many comments about the ones I missed out. Let me know who you think is worthy. I will follow up with another video if necessary. If you enjoy this video, take a look at my channel for more. The link's in the description. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Terence Hill's Trinity. The gunslinger at the centre of They Call Me Trinity. Trinity is still my name and other films in the franchise was often underestimated, along with his brother, Bambino, Bud Spencer. He'd defend settlements for hire from gangs and bandits in a hit series of Western comedies that spoofed the popular spaghetti Western tropes of the 70s, where the skills with his side iron were never the main focus until the final gunfight. After he hadn't been taken seriously for most of the film, his reflexes would always save the day. Gregory Peck's Jimmy Ringo. Peck was a great Western star, like Eastwood, known for playing righteous protectors. But in The Gunfighter, he played a gunslinger known to be a quick draw with a reputation that made even faster enemies, with young guns constantly looking to pick a fight with the veteran shooters. Jimmy Ringo had to find a way to stay alive long enough to get back to his estranged family. He couldn't avoid his violent past forever, and the final confrontation between him and the young sharpshooter Hunt Bromley, Skip Homier, forced him to prove why the kid should have never tried to make a name for himself. Val Kilmer's Doc Holliday. Aside being known for his erudite way with words, Doc Holliday was known for being one of the fastest guns in the American frontier, alongside his pal, Wyatt Earp, Deputy Marshal of Tombstone. In Tombstone, he joins the Earp brothers in protecting the small town in Arizona from Johnny Ringo, a notorious gun sell himself and his gang. Holiday was known to fire eloquent refrains as fast as he emptied the chamber of his cult single action army revolver, which he was incredibly deadly with, even after suffering from acute tuberculosis. He was just too high strung. Robert Vaughan's Lee, the 1960 version of The Magnificent Seven, considered one of the best westerns ever made, starring Yul Brenner as a gunslinger who assembles a team of seven gunmen to defend a Mexican village from Calvera and his bandits. One of these men is Robert Vaughan's Lee, known at one time for his incredible marksmanship, but who has since lost his nerve and spends his time avoiding gunfights. At the moment of truth, when Calvera's men have abducted several villages, he stares fear in the face and rescues them all in a dizzying barrage of bullets. Charles Bronson's Harmonica. In the Western epic, Once Upon a Time in the West, Charles Bronson plays a mysterious gunslinger, simply named Harmonica, who gets caught up between a cattle baron and a farmer's railroad feud. The baron sends Frank, Henry Fonda, the original man in black, to hunt down anyone trying to defend the farmer's rights, and Harmonica intervenes. Their showdown is one of the most famous in Western history, and while Frank is ruthless, he can't match the gunslinger's vengeance fueled accuracy. You brought two too many. John Wayne's Tom Donifon. John Wayne didn't play that many gunslingers due to their status as anti-heroes. And while the shootist featured one of the most famous stabs at any such unsavory archetype, that role was an aged gunfighter far past his prime. In The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, he plays Tom Donifon, a man at the center of a mystery involving who shot outlaw Liberty Valance. Lee Marvin, him or Senator Stoddard, James Stewart, intent on making a name for himself with a heroic origin story in a small western town, as questions arise as to who really pulled the trigger. It's clear that Donifon's swift reflexes saved the day.
Randolph Scott's Ben Brigade. Randolph Scott was known for playing tall in the saddle heroes and Ben Brigade in Ride Lonesome had a little more grit to him. The Western Follows Brigade, a renowned bounty hunter, and he brings wanted murderer Billy John, Ben Best, to Santa Cruz to be hanged. But the two have to cross perilous terrain in order to reach the city and justice. The former lawman appears to be only interested in the cash, but things take a violent turn, and he has to remind the outlaw why he's not to be crossed when it comes to drawing his sidearm. I thought for a minute there you were going to let him swing. So did I. Okay. Glenn Ford's George Temple. In The Fastest Gun Alive, Glenn Ford is a modest and soft-spoken storekeeper who doesn't want any trouble from anyone. Unfortunately for him and the small town of Cross Creek, a band of bank robbers decide to stop in and change their horses, bringing mischief and mayhem along with them. Overnight, they push the mild-mannered George Temple to his limit, and his violent past returns to haunt him necessitating him to take right, action against them like. in one explosive showdown. <laughs> Jeff Bridges, Wild Bill Hickok. Bridges adopts the likeness of Wild Bill Hickok, known for his Wild West Roadshow and being one of the fastest gunslingers in the American frontier, a quick drawing gunfighter who likes to live dangerously. The film follows Hickok as he tries to keep one step ahead of his mounting enemies and settle in what would become his final resting place, Deadwood, South Dakota. Hickok's reputation continues to precede him thanks to the exciting firefights in Wild Bill Hickok. Jamie Foxx's Django. In Quentin Tarantino's Django Unchained, Jamie Foxx's Django is a man on a mission, trying to find the wife he's been separated from by a slave trade. Taken under the wing of an urban Swiss dentist, Christopher Waltz, he learns how to fire rifles, pistols, and everything he needs to storm the plantation where she's being held captive. While Tarantino employs some revisionist history to give the film a happy ending, it's impressive watching Django mow down dozens of enemies on his way to rescue his true love in this exciting postmodern western. Welcome to any new viewers on my channel. Thanks for your time today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate your likes and subscribers. Don't forget to hit the notification button to get my new videos. Share with your friends. Drop me your comments. Bye for now. See you again soon. Interesting facts about famous people.